This is the official press conference for Spence versus Crawford. As Jimmy mentioned, I'm Brian Custer, the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. Listen, this has been a momentous year for the sport, for Showtime Boxing. Now you can't emphasize this enough, but this is not just a mega fight. It's bigger than that. This is a generational fight. And in the middle of this run, this great run of fights, this industry-leading schedule, we're thrilled to be delivering this once-in-a-generation fight. I'm glad they got this fight made. I'm so glad. I'm glad both fighters stayed the course and stayed true to the game to show the world that who the best fighter is. And uh, that just speaks true knowledge and true volumes about each, other, each fighter's character. I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, we're going to walk away victoriously. I know everybody on the stage tired of talking about it, tired of being asked questions about it. So it's time to get busy. It's all I care about, getting busy, seeing my guy go out there and doing everything he needs to do. He did what he said he was going to do, get those three belts. Now it's time to go get one more, one more. It's all about big fish right now. I'm going to give y'all a gift with the presence of myself and Errol, ah. July 29th, so y'all can witness greatness. There will be greatness July 29th that you guys will witness. You had the Sugar Ray Robinson era. You had the Ali era. The Marvin Hagler, the Tommy Hearns. You even had the Floyd Mayweather his air, but July 29th, I'm gonna show each and every one of y'all why. This air is the Terrence Crawford air. You had the best fighting the best. And finally, we at this point where, you know, me and Terrence Crawford had to get on the phone, talk about it, and now, you know, it's finally happening. The best fighting the best, I feel like it's an old school fight, creme de la creme, and it's gonna prove not only the best what's way in the world is going to prove who the best fighter in the world is. If you know my mentality, you know, it's to win, it's to go all out, give it everything. His mentality is the same thing. So I want everybody to tune in July 29th, come to the fight. What does a victory, though, on the 29th mean, mean to you specifically? We know it comes as being undisputed. That would also mean you'd be the first fighter to be undisputed in two different weight classes. What would a victory on the 29th mean to you? Well, like I said, that piggybacks on what I said before. It shows that I'm the greatest fighter of this era. No one, no man have captured undisputed in two different weight classes. The female did last week. Tia Fimo definitely wasn't. He was a lineal, correction, but he wasn't undisputed. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Sorry, sir. You tried it. But yes, once again, I will be the first male boxer to actually capture the welterweight champion in two divisions, and that would solidify me as the greatest fighter of this era. Definitely not, man. I'm not going to lie, Tyrant got the best matchmakers in the business. You ain't fought nobody, man. You haven't beat anybody undisputed at 140. Who you fought at 135 and who you fought at 147. Even you fought Sean Porter. Even Sean Porter said. What did he, I do to Sean did, Porter that you couldn't Sean do? Porter say, even said what he did, he did not Sean train Porter like he should. He didn't do the do. things that his daddy told him to do. What are you, you talking about? Even his daddy her. said it. Even his you, daddy said it. You but heard that I got the Even his daddy said it. You but her. Even Kev Brook, he was already broken. So was he broken you when you fought? No, he wasn't broken. How come? I broke the other eye. He came off. Of, I broke the other eye. Yeah, that's how stoppage. I got broke. That's how I got broke. He came off a of stoppage. What does it matter? He came off a of stoppage, what, and then he fought you. What months, does it? What does it matter? Months prior. What so, does it matter? So was he broken or not? No, he, he wasn't broken. No, he wasn't broken. Yeah, you're right. You're right. What are you talking about? I had the same surgery he had, and what happened? 
So what they say about you then? You fight me then? I'm going to break the other <laughs> So what, what they say? So I'm broken then, right? Well, you're broken. You're going to be broken July 29th. <laughs> yeah, uh, we going to see. You're going to be broken. So it, now, that, now, that begs the question, Aaron. What, 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 what does a win mean to you specifically on the 29th? It just mean I, I, he's a great father. It just mean I broke another great father wheel, and I broke him down mentally, physically, and I came out on top. Never. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You know, Errol, the interesting thing is you are the unified welterweight champion. You've taken away everyone's strap, it seems like, in this division, yet you're the Vegas underdog coming into this fight. Does that motivate you? Does that upset you, your feelings on that? Oh, uh, no, nah, I, don't, I don't pay attention to it. I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, everything I've been do throughout these two, three years, I mean, I should be the underdog. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. A lot of, a lot of people become underdog and they end up winning, so that's why it's a bit. They know what's going to happen, that's why. But I want to ask you about that. I, I loved it on social media. You characterize July 29th as a fish fry. Can you enlighten the people on what you meant by that? I'm going to gut them. And I'm going to feed them to everybody that eat fish in here. <laughs> <laughs> call yourself the big fish. We're going to have enough food for everybody. We'll see. We'll definitely see. Put some potatoes on the side of it, too. Hey, man, y'all go to ESJ.com, to truth.com, and go buy that eye pack, man. We're going to roll him up and smoke him in Vegas. We, we, we'll see. Errol? We don't, we, don't, we don't smoke over here. It's legal know, in man. Vegas, man. We're going to roll him up and smoke we do, him. All we do hey, is man. fish filet. We're going to roll him up and smoke him, man. We go hunting over here. And that's like I said, we're going to roll him up and smoke this dude. Uh, Errol, you described it on social media as, quote, a one-sided ass whooping. I'm going to punish Terrence Crawford. That's how it always is. It's going to be a one-sided ass with me. I mean, he's going to come in with the mentality, and, you know, it's going to probably take a few rounds, but and he's a stubborn dude. So, but we're going to, like I said, man, everybody get broke. We're going to break him, man. We're going to break him like a horse. I'm ready. What are people going to say? Because this fight has been so anticipated. Once it's over, what do you think people are going to say about the fight? And what are they going to say about Bud Crawford? They're going to say Bud Crawford is special. And all the people that thought he was going to do what he said he was going to do, they're going to say, wow, we was wrong about that kid. He is special. He is great. That's what they're going to walk away, walk away saying. This boy is great. And I can assure you that. And he'll, he'll give me my respect after the fight. Right now, he in the mode of... I give you your respect you know, now. No, 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 no. I give you your I'm respect talking, now. I'm talking about... When I whoop that ass, you're going to really I give you your respect now. I give you your respect now. Damn. You great well, right now. I'm going to have to do it again. But Like, yeah. like the rest of them. Time of her and the autumn dudes are great. Marvin Harry Durant, autumn guys are great, man. But, hey, man, sometimes dudes get broke.